Welcome to a noob's guide to Rakarth. This is Rakarth, beast lord of Karen Kar. In a world where capturing monsters and forcing them to fight for your amusement is encouraged, Rakarth wants to be the very best, like no one ever was. To catch them all is his real test and to train them as his cause. Which is only cute until you realize it means unaccompanied minors engaging in magical cockfights. Who's that Pokemon? A free playable lord in Total War Warhammer 2, Rakarth will travel the world searching far and wide for any monsters he can pocket. Sadly, he doesn't come with three types of Hydra and a full DLC of new units, but he does bring enough monsters that you could safely rename his faction as Noah's Black Ark. Dark Elves have always made great use of enslaved monsters, but no Beastmaster has ever approached Rakarth's level of fame or expertise. It's said that the dungeons of Karen Kar are filled with creatures Rakarth has taken named, one from every corner of the known world. Found a clutch of dragon eggs? Send them to Rakarth. A particularly stubborn dark pegasi? Rakarth will break it. Favorite manacor sick after eating too many slaves? Well, that's not really his thing, but he'll take a look anyway. Because Rakarth is the Dr. Doolittle of the Druki world. When he was just a child, his father attempted to break and train the mighty black dragon, Brachus. When the dragon tried to geld his father instead of breaking to his will, the Beastmaster ordered the beast killed in a fit of petty rage. Rakarth stepped in and struck a deal that if he managed to ride the beast, he could keep it instead. Earlier editions of this story had Rickarth staring down a black horse, which sounds far less impressive and is too obviously stolen from an early myth about Alexander the Great and his faithful steed Bucephalus. But as Rickarth's father was more interested in a good bet than the welfare of his child, he agreed. The boy walked up, fixed the dragon with his patented piercing stare, and the two locked eyes. The dragon saw in Rickarth an innate cruelty and bloodlust that ensured that if Brachus didn't roll over and show his throat lickety-split, this dark elf wouldn't just kill him. He would castrate him first, grill his kibbles and bits on an open flame, and then dine on them in front of him. And though no one will ever believe me, I wrote that joke before it was revealed that Rickarth's voice actor is Ramsay Bolton from Game of Thrones who actually does that. Or Simon from Misfits if you're cultured. But honestly, it's probably the most perfect voice actor casting in the history of mankind. Rickarth's strategy must have worked because he's ridden Brachus into battle ever since. And the Black Dragon is available as a unique unlockable mount in-game. Rickarth's piercing stare also made it in, with the icon of his beast gaze drawing clear inspiration from Bela Lugosi's iconic Dracula stare. Normally when a monster gets too beat up too fast, it goes on an angry rampage, attacking the nearest enemy unit and ignoring any orders. But Rickarth can stop this rampage with just a glance. He can even upgrade the beast gaze in his skill tree to make it a permanent passive aura, keeping any nearby monsters' heads in the game by constantly whispering to them about cold showers, baseball, and Margaret Thatcher naked on a cold day, which basically makes the beast gaze that one part in Crocodile Dundee with the water buffalo, staring deeply into an animal's eyes and then connecting with it on a sadomasochistic level. Which, how does getting it to lay down in the middle of the road solve the problem? It seems more like a party trick you'd try on drunk frat girls. Not that Rickarth did that sort of thing, his interests are far more exotic. While other Druki were getting it on, Rickarth was up to his neck in monster poop, because you can only become a lord of monsters through long hours and a proper mastery of baiting techniques, learning to seize your beast with both hands and then relentlessly beating it into submission. Sure, now the cabin of his Black Ark is filled with Zoophilia groupies looking for a bit of pet play, but he earned it. Normally, this sort of behavior would either get you a cell on a psychiatric ward or a show on Animal Planet, but the fruits of Rickarth's labors is the world's most complete collection of monsters, hailing from every roster in the game. Feral mammoths, feral manacores, harpies, hydra, cardibus, bloodrack medusas, feral stegodons, feral carnosaurs, giant wolves, exploding squigs, and black dragons. Note that a few of those will require the Queen and the Crone DLC because the Creative Assembly sells games, not handouts. Except that Wreck Hearth is free, so I guess they do give handouts, just not those for 
reasons. Fielding these monsters in-game is a mercifully straightforward mechanic. You recruit them by clicking on a button next to the Regiments of Renown button. There, you'll see all your available beastly options and the amount still left in your recruitment pool. To add more to the pool, you have to raid, sack, and fight your way across the old world, taking the monsters from thematically relevant locations. Mammoths come from sacking Norskin cities, wolves are raided from forests, and a metric ton more will be added the moment modders get their dirty paws on this. As you'll be spending most of your game in raiding stance to ensure a regular supply of new pets to torture, one of Ricarth's unique faction traits is that he doesn't get tired while raiding, so you can launch immediately into a fight no problem, and not have to constantly stance dance the entire campaign. But even then, you can't be expected to travel the entire world just to keep your beast pool at a usable level. So the new Convocation of Hunters right has been added, which lets you send out a hunting party that will bring back a random smattering of animals. Normally, the internet would bandwagon together to harumph Rakarth to death and smother him in their moral superiority for not letting these furry friends live free and in the wild. But in a world where hominids aren't even among the top 10 apex predators, and half of them are from another plane of existence entirely, he gets a pass. Though Ricarth's use of the barbed whip of agony has raised a few eyebrows. This unique in-game item removes the fear and terror effect from enemy monsters while also reducing their morale, which is a hell of a trick when you remember he's using it on 30-foot tall monsters with five heads and zero fucks to give. Ricarth himself is a heavily armored, anti-large character who specializes in slaying monstrous creatures, and as he begins both of his campaigns on the distant island of Albion, it's the perfect place to test him out, as it also houses the most badass Croxagore in Lizard Man history. Who's that Pokemon? Nakai the Wire, does he keep going? All right, hold on. There he is. Nakai the Wanderer, who you'll fight in a quest battle to determine the new frontman of Devo and unlock the Whip of Agony. Which is all to say that even though he's a free lord, Rikarth has all the trappings of a full release. Maybe the real reason he's free is because he just looks like Joaquin Phoenix cosplaying a coup from Samurai Jack. Having a wicked facial scar is normally the fastest way of letting an audience know someone's a badass, but with animal trainers, it just makes you look bad at your job. I mean, that is red, puffy, and obviously in Infected. If Ricarth wasn't in a world with magical healing, I'd say it needs stitches and immediate medical attention. Ironically, if CA had given him his badass mask from the official art, it would never even have happened to begin with. Malice Darkblade was previously released as the Monster Guy DLC to the chagrin of Dark Elf fans everywhere, but with Rikarth's release, you can now field an actual Beast Lord, with reduced upkeep for all monstrous units, as well as increased melee defense and reduced recruitment time for them. Rikarth's unique skills follow that same evil Jack Hanna Zookeeper routine. Apex Predator grants his entire army the Dark Elf's murderous mastery skill, so that when they start killing, they'll keep killing things until until they're super dead. Harpy Claw Bolts gives a new type of ammo to Reaper Bolt Throwers and Scourge Runner Chariots that slows anything it hits on impact. Why declawing harpies and taping these to ballista bolts slows people down isn't explained, and it seems like barbed arrows would do mostly the same thing, but when you've got so many harpies lying around, you gotta find some use for them, because you're gonna be drowning in the things. As Ricarth upkeeps them for free thanks to his carry and crows skill, and its other bonuses are there to remind you that Ricarth's campaign will require you to raid your way to success. The free range skill is especially neat as it lets Ricarth replenish his army in enemy territory, since his monstrous menagerie has no problem living off the land, and the people living in the land. Ricarth's flavor text include references to the flying monkey army of the Wizard of Oz and the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park, but not even a doff of the cap to the 1982 sword and sorcery B-movie masterpiece the Beastmaster, which is an affront, as Ricarth clearly taped it off the late night superstation between Chuck Norris marathons and watched it until the VCR broke. I mean, where else could he have gotten the idea to dress like a BDSM Siegfried and Roy, except from the film that bought a tiger and then dyed it black just so it would look cooler? Because if there's one thing Ricarth knows, it's how to be absolutely poggers. Even in the end times, he somehow found a way to steal that shit show. 
During the battle for the invasion of Nagaroth, Rakarth was wreaking so much destruction atop Brachus that it took the summoning of a magical ghost ship just to slam into the dragon and stab it in the heart to bring it down. But even then, Rakarth wouldn't quit. He grabbed the ship's captain, Wolfric the Wanderer, no relation to Nakai, and the two fought tooth and nail all the way to the ground as Rakarth tried to avenge his fallen mount, crashing into the icy waste below where Rakarth was only defeated because he was crushed under the weight of Wolfric's plot armor. At any point, Rakarth could have bailed on his dragon buddy, but Beastmasters ride or die. You raid, you slave, and you take them monsters to the grave. And when you get your hands on Rakarth, don't you forget it. Thanks for watching this noob's guide to Rakarth the Beast Lord. If you enjoyed this video, there's more like it on the channel, and you can subscribe to be notified about future releases, or join the Patreon and help support their creation. They're sponsored by viewers just like you. As always, thanks for watching.